Uh, thank you. Um, Dr. Agorta, um, first of all, if you could please provide us with a copy, perhaps, of that poster and the PowerPoint presentation that you referenced earlier in your presentation, that would be helpful if we could have that for our committee. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, so you're a psychiatrist, correct? Correct. All right, and your association is um, a group of psychiatrists in, in Quebec. It actually represents 1,150 psychiatrists. It's probably about 97% of the psychiatrists practicing in Quebec are part of our association. Okay, great, thank you. Um, first of all, I just um, actually want to thank you for the work that you do every day to help people with mental health challenges in your province. Um, and I want to give you that additional time um, that you requested in your brief opening statement to tell us more about the effects of marijuana on brain development, on psychosis, and on dependence. And if you have a chance to tell us a little bit more about why you believe 21 years of age is a preferable minimum age to 18. Good. Okay, thank you. Um, so there's been different studies looking at how cannabis affects the brain, both from a functional perspective and from a structural perspective. Um, and some of these studies have not been replicated, so the science is still early um, in terms of the structural stuff. But what we have seen on certain studies is reduction in, a vol in the volume of the different uh, regions of the brain, uh, changes in the white matter. So the brain is, uh, there's white matter and there's the gray matter. The white matter is the, is the part of the brain that's myelinated, that's why it's white. Um, so um, uh, changes in the way that that is structured and what's thought, the reason it's, it's thought to uh, do that is because during adolescence and young adulthood, the brain is maturing, and part of the maturation is what we call pruning. So when you're a, a very young child, you have lots and lots and lots of neuronal connections. And as you develop and you experience life, the neuronal connections that are not of use to you get pruned. So like a tree that has too many branches, we prune it off. This is why it's very easy to learn multiple languages when you're young. And as you get older, if you never used those um, language skills, you lose them. And so this is why you develop, you know, you can learn a second language, but you always have an accent because your brain, the plasticity of the brain is such that you've lost some of those connections. So Pruning is also a way of making the brain more efficient. So what happens as you go through adolescence is your frontal lobes become more efficient and the frontal lobes is the area where you have what's called executive functioning. So that's the ability to plan, to foresee consequences to your actions, to um, control your own impulsivity, which is also why, you know, sometimes those of us who are parents of teenagers think teenagers are crazy. It's because their frontal lobes aren't quite yet developed. And so they make impulsive decisions and they can't plan for their assignment that's due in three weeks that they need to do a little bit at a time because th this part of the brain hasn't matured completely yet. Um, one of these, I've lost you. Sorry, if I could just get you to move on quickly to psychosis and dependence very quickly, because I will probably get cut off by the chair. The yes. <laughs> okay, yes. sorry. Impact so what I wanted to say about that brain development is the endocannabinoid system is, is involved in that pruning. And when you flood it with cannabis, then you alter the way that it prunes. So that's how you're changing the structure. In terms of the function of the brain, we know that the memory and concentration are less. Um, how it uh, creates uh, psychosis, we don't yet know, and we don't know in who it will create psychosis. But what we do know is that on average, people who smoke, uh, who've smoked once in their lifetime have a 40% increased risk of developing psychosis, and people who smoke regularly and often in high quantities have a 390%, uh, so like a four times risk of developing psychosis. Uh, so the numbers are there, um, and because the THC levels are higher, we're seeing more and more psychosis in our emergency rooms across the province. In terms of dependence, because of the way the cannabis is affecting the structure, uh, and because teenagers are, are impulsive and they haven't developed all of the same 
skills of emotional regulation that we do as adults. If you start using when you're a teenager and you don't develop those skills, you're more likely to develop a dependence and to use cannabis as a means of emotional regulation rather than developing other skills to deal with your, you know, sadness or your happiness or your anger or, or, or your disappointment or whatever. Thank you. Thank you very much for your explanation, you. Uh, Dr. Igart.